This video is a quick overview of the axial skeleton. Now the axial skeleton consists of bones in both your head and your trunk. There are about 80 bones in total and six parts. So it includes your skull, the ossicles of your ears, your hyoid, which is your throat bone, the rib cage, the sternum, and the vertebral column. Starting with the skull, the skull is a very bony structure that supports the face and it acts as a protective cavity for the brain. It's composed of both a cranium or neurocranium and a mandible, which is the viscerocranium. There are several cranial bones. There is the parietal bone, the temporal bone, the sphenoid bone, the occipital bone, the frontal bone, and the ethmoid bone. The frontal bone is, of course, the most anterior bone of the skull, occipital being the posterior bone. Parietal is kind of in the back uh, middle, and then temporal is on the side, including your ear bones. And then the sphenoid is kind of behind your eye socket, right? And the ethmoid is kind of the back, back location of your eye socket. There are several features found on the skull. There's the coronal suture, which is the suture between the parietal and the frontal bone. There's also the styloid process that's found on the uh, temporal bone. There's the lamboid suture that separates parietal and the occipital bone. The foramen magnum is a very important hole in the occipital bone that connects with the spinal cord. There's also the crista galli in the ethmoid bone. There's the infraorbital foramen in the maxilla and the cella trisica in your sphenoid bone, which of course is the butterfly looking bone. There are also several facial bones. This is the zygomatic bone or your cheek. The maxilla is where your teeth are protruding from, your nasal bone, your lacrimal bone, which is the tear duct, and of course the mandible, which is your lower jaw. There are several mandibular features that you wanna be able to recognize. The first of which is the mandibular fossa, um, which remember a fossa is just an articulative surface. surface. Um, there is the mandibular condyle, which is sort of a rounded articular surface. There's a mandibular notch. There's the ramus, which is just the arm of your mandible. There's the mandibular angle, the coronoid fossa, the mandibular foramen, there's the alveolar process, there's the mental foramen, right? And the mental foramen is, is of course on your mentalis or your chin. And then there's the body of your mandible. The second portion of your axial skeleton is the vertebral column, which of course survives, um, provides, excuse me, support and rigidity to your body. Um, you should be able to identify general structures of vertebra, such as the vertebral arch that contains the pedicles and the lamina. There's also the spinous process. There's also the transverse process and what I call zygopophyses, which are the articular processes that articulate with um, each vertebrae. So our ver vertebrae have to articulate with each other and how they articulate with each other are called zygopophyses. So the first um, type of vertebra is called the cervical vertebra. This is your neck region, so your cervical region. Cervical vertebra are characterized by a transverse foramen. It's only found in cervical vertebra. The very first cervical vertebra is called the atlas because it holds the globe of the head. It is the atlas that's in essence going to articulate with the occipital condyles. Um, the second cervical vertebra is the axis, which articulates with the atlas via what's called a dens or an odontoid process. There are seven total cervical vertebra in your neck region. Most of the general cervical vertebra can be characterized by, of course, the transverse foramen, but you can separate them or distinguish them from the atlas and the axis via their much larger centrum or body. The second vertebra are the thoracic vertebra, which are characterized by a transverse process that has a costal facet that articulates with the ribs. There are 12 total thoracic vertebra and 12 total pairs of ribs. The lumbar vertebra are characterized by their kidney-shaped body or centrum. This is your lower back vertebra. 
There are a total of five and they are between the rib cage and your pelvis. The sacral vertebra is the most inferior vertebra. It's formed via a fusion of five vertebra and at the very tail end of it, ha, tail end of it, is the coccyx or the tailbone, which lies inferior, of course, to your sacrum. Okay, the axial skeleton also involves the sternum, which is this dagger-shaped bone that's medial to your ribs. There are three sections to a sternum. There's the manubrium, there's the body, and the xiphoid process. Some features of the sternum involve the facets where the sternal segments of the ribs are going to attach. Um, there's also the clavic clavicular notch that articulates with the clavicle and the suprasternal notch that is also sometimes called the jugular notch. So ribs are also part of your axial skeleton that of course articulate with that costal facet of the thoracic vertebra. There are in essence two types of ribs. Um, there's the vertebrosternal, which are your true ribs that attach directly to the sternum. These are pairs one through seven. But there are also false ribs, and false ribs can attach um, indirectly to the sternum, such as pairs eight through 10. But there are also what are called floating or vertebrochondral ribs, which are false ribs um, also. This is pairs 11 and 12, and these do not attach to the sternum.